Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? My name is Tyrone Yarbrough. For all of those who have not met me yet, you have just met me. Hello, hello, hello. This is the St. James Church here in Kansas City. Uh, we want to say hello to everyone in person. We love you. We thank you for being here. We want to say a special hello to all of those who are online worshiping with us. We say thank you because we know there are so many options, so many options, but you chose to be with us today and we are glad and we're thankful for you. All right. And we have some all over the world. Dr. Three says we maybe have some on a couple of different, uh, uh, what, a couple of different continents, right? So we got people everywhere. St. James is global. And that is a blessing. You know, uh, COVID showed us a few things. It gave, it gave us a brand new way of doing things. And some of it was tough to get, get through. But we're still making it and we're still here. And we thank God for all of you. Amen? All right. So for those who are worshiping with us uh, either at home or traveling, some people are traveling around the world, some are on vacation, but they still get up and they worship with us. Uh, go ahead and put your name in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're worshiping from, because uh, we want to say hello to you and give you a virtual hug. Uh, virtual hug is, is, of course, the thing that we had to create because of COVID again. Uh, it's, it's taught us some new things and uh, some of them are good and some of them we're still getting used to. All right, I'm excited for the word today. Dr. Three always brings something, and it's always something that makes me say, hmm, I didn't know that. Wow. You know, and that's one of the good things I like about our pastor. Can we give our pastor a hand, praise? He's a teaching pastor. He's always reading. If you go in his office, he's got this wall full of books, and... Um, He's read probably all of them it's a, a couple of times. So uh, that's a, something I really like and I appreciate about Dr. Three, uh, always imparting something new, um, showing us how God works. All right, that is a blessing. So his word for today is a welcoming life. And I can't wait to see what the spin will be on that and what we will learn and what God has given him. All right, so. Before we get started, let us start with a word of prayer. Would you go with me to God? God of love, God of our salvation, we come this morning first giving thanks to you for the gifts that you give us every day, your grace and your mercy. Loving God, we ask that you bless us with your presence in this worship celebration. We want you to be right here with us as we send up praises to your name. We pray that this celebration will lift those of us who are in need of a touch from you. Lord, as we welcome you, we welcome all of those who are here in the building. And again, we welcome those who are at home or some maybe even at work, worshiping, or even traveling, we ask that wherever they are, that they get that same special touch all over the world. We welcome you, God, and we welcome all of them. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus the Christ. And the people of God said, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Come on now. In everything I do, I keep on. Everything I do, I keep on. Everything I do, I keep on. I keep on. I keep on. I keep on. Everything I do, I keep on. Everything I do, I keep on. Everything I do, keep on. I keep on. I keep on. I keep on. Every move I make, I keep on. Every move I make, I 
make, I keep on. Every move I make, I keep on. I keep on, keep on, I keep on leaning on the Lord. Everywhere I go, I keep on leaning on the Lord. Everywhere I go, I keep on leaning on the Lord. Everywhere I go, I keep on leaning on the Lord. I keep on, I keep on, I keep on leaning on the Lord. men, the master's men. You know, one of the things that used to be really just a great visual was to see all of the men up here praising God. And again, you know, these last couple years have been challenging, but did you feel the spirit just now? Did you see the energy? Did you hear it? Leaning on the Lord through our tough times. That's the best thing that we can do is lean on the Lord. You know, um, so as we go to this next part, I, I was thinking this morning of all the things, well, some of the things that God has blessed me with. He blessed me with my health. He blessed me with a, a wonderful church family. He blessed me with a wonderful, healthy family. I have folks traveling and they're making it to and from safely. I'm blessed to have my grandchildren worshiping or 
they should be here in a moment, and they'll probably be sitting up there. My wife is an online worshiper, so she's moving in her time, but she'll be here with the grandkids. So those are just some of the things that I'm thankful for. And what I'd like to do is ask you to think of some of the things that you're thankful for. Now, let's just take a moment right here together and just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because he's been mighty good to us. And if we've heard of those 600 and something laws that we cannot possibly follow all of them, and God has still been good to us, let's again just say, thank you, God. So at this time, I'd like to invite you to the altar. Along with our thank you, some of us are still have some things that we are going through and we need God's help. So if you would come to the altar, lay it on the altar, leave it there for God. When you leave, don't pick it back up, leave it there for God. So we'd like to welcome you to the altar right now. The altar is open. Let's all stay in an attitude of prayer as we go to God together. Holy, loving, and merciful God, you are so kind and forgiving. And we can truly say that you have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Too often we have gone after our desires and in doing so, we've ignored your call on our lives. The call to help those who are struggling, those in need. 
Loving God, we recognize that this earth is full of problems. And you have anointed and empowered us to do something about it. So Lord, help us to live up to our calling. We also give you thanks because you have forgiven us for falling short of what you require of us. We've made mistakes in our personal lives and you still love us. Your love cannot be explained with mere human words. It defies anything that we can possibly understand. Your love is so amazing because you care about us even when we don't care about ourselves Lord we ask that you bless this worship experience here now that we continue to lift you up in song that we lift you up through the preached word that those who are gathered will experience you they'll feel your power and presence and know that with you, all things are possible, regardless of what's going on in our lives. We know that with you, we can stand firm. We thank you that you loved us and love us so much that you gave the very, very best that you have in your son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Redeemer. And so it's in him that we lift up this prayer, knowing that if we ask in his name, you will receive it. So we ask it in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that you guide and strengthen us here and now. It's in his holy name that we pray. Amen. 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 Heartaches, many times I've had heartaches, but I'm still here. Trouble, I've had my share of trouble, but I'm still here. I've taken my lumps and bruises, but I'm still here. Loneliness, I've had my share of loneliness, but I'm still here. Through it all, I've made it through. Yes, I did. God help me. I've made it one more day. Another day's journey. God help me. Lied on. Many times I've been lied on. But I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. Burdens, I had to bear so many burdens, but I'm still here. Oh, dark days, many times I've had dark days, but I'm still here. Disappointments, I've had so many disappointments, oh, yeah. but I'm still here, here. through it all. I've made it through another day's journey. One more day, I kept me here. He put his arms around me and kept me here. I've made it through yeah. another day.
by the grace of God that I'm still here today. He was always there, no matter what came my way. A very present help in my time of need. Standing right there just to see about me. Say I made it. I made it through another day's journey. Kept me here. I didn't deserve it, but I'm still here today. I made it through another day's journey. So my God kept me here. Sometimes I lay in there at night. Have you laid away at night? Wondering what tomorrow will bring. Tears in your heart. Not sure well it was all the work. I know it's hurt. Yes, I made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. Yes, I made it. Did you make it? Did you make it? Yes, I made it. Yes, I made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. Through it all. Through it all. I'm still here. Yeah. All right. I made it. I made it through. All right. This is a, one of the best parts of worship. This is giving time. All right. As you know, our giving helps this community. It helps the city and uh, our volunteers and mission go all over the world helping others. So our giving is truly helping to make the world a better place. Amen? All right. So, if you would, please join me in reading today's tithing scripture. The tithing scripture is Exodus 35 and 5. Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Let whoever is of a generous heart bring the Lord's offering, gold, silver, and bronze. Now, for us today, that might mean our finances, it might mean our time, our gifts, and our talents. But this is the time to give back to God just a little bit, just a tenth of what he has given us. All right? There are many ways uh, for us to give our offering. If you are uh, planning to give with an offering envelope and you don't see one, raise your hand. If you don't have one, raise your hand and, and the ushers will assist you. For those who are online, and you are giving. Just hit that drop down tab, that giving tab. There we go, good. Hit that drop down tab and follow the instructions there. Um, also, for those who are giving by your smartphone or your device, um, just uh, text in SJUMC 77977. Follow those directions and you will be able to give your offering unto God. Now, for those who want to uh, write a check and mail it in, you can mail it to 5540 Wayne, Kansas City, Missouri, 64110. Also, for those who are in the neighborhood and would like to drop off your, your giving, your gift, you can also come to 5540 Wayne and drop off your offering. All right? Now, as they come, as the ushers come, we will hear a little bit of music and then we will go back to higher praise until we can hear the word of God from our pastor. Amen.
Loving God, we come again just saying thank you for all of those who were able to give. And we say thank you for those who had a desire to give. Father God, we ask that you bless these gifts, tithes, and offerings, that they may be used for the building of your kingdom right here, right now, in this place called St. James, in this community, and all over the world. Lord God, we love you and we thank you. And we pray that you would continue to use us as vessels of praise and, and may this offering lift someone in the name of Jesus, amen. All right, I have just a couple of announcements. Just, just a couple of announcements. Um, today is the fifth Sunday, and on fifth Sunday we have what we call Super Adult Sunday School. Super Adult Sunday School, so that will take place uh, at 11 o'clock on Zoom. You may join at, on Zoom, and that is a great time when all of the uh, classes get together and, and have a large Bible study and they have specific something, uh, let's see, who is the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit have in the Trinity? How do we know if the Spirit is active in us and why does this matter? That sounds like a great uh, Bible study and uh, I know we'll have a good time there. Also, Back to School is coming up really soon, and uh, we are accepting donations to help uh, uh, give packs to some of the, our partnering schools. We have King, uh, we have uh, some schools out south, and we are so thankful uh, for those partnerships, and we're thankful that we're able to give something to our young ones that are starting school again. So, if you have gifts, or if you have things that you want to bring to help, uh, you may drop those off and we are accepting those until August 3rd. And I, I bet we'll probably take some a little bit after that, but try to get your, uh, get it in before then. That would be great. Now, our midday prayer is back. Midday prayer is back. It's going to also start on August 3rd uh, and it's via Zoom, via Zoom. So if you, do you get our uh, e-news? Does everyone receive the e-news? If you receive the e-news, when you see that midday prayer on there, you can just click on it and you will be uh, joined right into the Zoom uh, on your uh, laptop or your smart device. You will be able to Zoom right there. Now, I have a special, something special going on right here. Mr. Ernest, um, he helps keep our our church clean, helps keep the building clean and takes care of some things and he was, he wanted to be a blessing and so he just, out of the goodness of his heart, said he wanted to bless somebody and he thought specific. Now don't take it personal because it's not you. <laughs> but Mr. Ernest, he said, man, we, I want to do something nice for someone and he asked a couple questions of some of us and uh, we thought it was a great idea. Mr. Ernest wanted to bless Miss Gloria. Miss Gloria has been with us and blessing us for so long. So he began asking questions about what she liked and different things like that. And I bet she was wondering, what is he, why is he asking me all this? So one of the things he asked her about was the Williams brothers. Everybody knows about the Williams brothers, right? Yeah. All right. And so Miss Gloria went on to tell him that when she was a young person, the Williams brothers would come to her, the church that she grew up in. And so she got a chance to meet them and things like that and how that, they have a special place in her heart. So he knew that the Williams brothers were coming to Kansas City, and so he wanted to gift her with some tickets to go see the Williams brothers. Ms. Gloria, we love you.
so it's just good to be able to show love to one another and it doesn't have to be done like this if you you see somebody and you want to bless them go ahead that's what we're supposed to do all right let's get ready for the word of God as it has been given to our pastor I'm excited about it after the master's men bless us one more time we will hear the word of God from Dr. Emmanuel Cleaver the third amen amen Prepare yourself for today's message from Dr. Cleaver. A welcoming life. What's up, man? How you doing? Good morning. It's good to see you, man. Good morning. Heavy load on my shoulder. Yeah, come on. I thought that it would be easier than this. Yeah. I thought my heart had grown colder. But the warmth of your love I can't dismiss. Though my past has left me bruised, I ain't hiding from the truth. Yeah. When the truth won't let me share my love for you And I'm holding on, and I'm holding strong Even though I try to make it, break the pot, but I can't break it I keep holding on, and I'm holding strong even though I try to break it, heaven knows that I can't shake it. Oh, oh, and on. Oh, 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 and on. Oh, 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 and on. Oh, 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 and on. When times that were harder, harder. I remember the taste of bitterness. Won't you help me, my father? Yeah. Help me fall in the love that I have missed. Though my past has left me bruised, I ain't hiding from the truth. When the truth won't let me share my love for you And I'm holding on, and I'm holding strong Even though I try to make it, break the pot, but I can't make it I keep holding on, and I'm holding strong even though I try to break it, heaven knows that I can't shake it. Oh, oh, and on. Oh, oh, and on. Oh, on. Oh, oh, and on. Oh, on. Oh, oh, and on. Make it, heaven knows that I can't break it. I keep holding on, and I'm holding strong. Even though I try to break it, heaven knows that I can't shake it. Keep holding on, keep holding on. Holding on, holding on, 
Yes, I am. I'm holding on. Holding on. Holding on. To my father. Yes, I am. To my God. To my babe in Jesus. Sometimes when you're going through struggles, all you can do is hold on, but you have to make sure you're holding on to the right things because some things are flimsy. So during those trials, those tribulations in your life, you reach out to grab onto something so that you can maintain, but if it's flimsy, then you fall right along with the very thing that you're holding on to. It is essential that you know what you're holding on to, and I would suggest God's unchanging hand that can lift you up out of any situation that you might be dealing with in life. Hold on, hold on. It's an important message. Hold on. Uh, as always, it's good to gather in the name of the Lord, and God was thinking about you all week long. So there is a word from God for you today, and I pray that you are open to receive what it is that God has for you, because God does have something specifically for you. Let's pray. Loving, merciful, and mighty God, we honor you. We give you thanks for this day. We have honored you with song and with prayer, and now it's time to hear from you. Help me to empty myself that you might fill me completely with your Holy Spirit. Help me to decrease that your power might increase. Use me, mighty God, that I might stand boldly on your word and declare your truth to your people for your name's sake, Holy Spirit, have your way in and through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want to read from the New Testament here this morning, the New Testament book of Philippians, chapter 2. And I want to read verses 25 to 30. Philippians 2, 25 to 30. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I encourage you, you can stand either in body or in spirit, whatever you are comfortable with. Stand in body or in spirit. And we'll read Philippians chapter 2, 25 to 30. It reads, Still, I think it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died. But God had mercy on him and not only on him, but on me also. So that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again and that I may be less anxious. Welcome him. Then in the Lord with all joy and honor such people, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for those services that you could not give me. May God bless the reading, the hearing, the understanding, but most of all, the doing of the sacred and holy word. Amen. Please be seated. I want to talk about a welcoming life, a welcoming life. Anyone who has been in business understands the concept of customer service. 
that is those who, whom you are serving, you treat fair, with dignity, and being polite. Customer service is extremely important in business because one, it helps you to re retain those customers. Because you treated them so well, they tend to come back. Not only does it help you retain customers, but it also helps you to gain new customers because those customers who have been satisfied with your service, of course, go and tell others or put it online, put it on Yelp. Some way they get the word out and businesses receive new customers. And, and, and when you have good customer service, it makes you, makes you feel good, makes you feel like they're thinking about you, that you're important, that you're valued. You can see certain businesses around Kansas City or around the country that practice good customer service. I mean, there's actually a place uh, not too far from here that as soon as you walk in the door, even if you haven't had a chance to look at the menu, you all are laughing like you know what I'm talking about. As soon as your big toe enters the door, Hi, may I help you? I always tell people when I bring them from out of town, okay, now don't be alarmed. As soon as you go in, as soon as you go into Gates Barbecue, they're going to ask you, can they help you? Don't worry about it. Just look at the menu. They'll ask you about 12 times <laughs> until you finally answer. But the whole point is to show that the customer, we're thinking about you. We see you, we acknowledge you, and we want you to know that we're here for you. I mean, have you ever been to a place where they have bad customer service and you can't wait to get out? Sometimes we'll ask to talk to a manager or we'll put it online. This place is terrible because people want to be appreciated. They want to be valued. Customer service helps businesses remain relevant and sustainable. Now, I want you to know during the course of this sermon, I'm going to use welcome and hospitality interchangeably. And I want us to look at what does it mean to live a welcoming life? Welcoming life, because when we are hospitable or welcoming, it shows others that they are appreciated. It connects you with the one you're being hospitable to and it shows that you value them. How can we live a welcoming life? So the Apostle Paul, as many of you may know, is credited with spreading the good news of Jesus more than any other human. He uh, started off as a, a strict uh, Pharisee following the Jewish law, but had a conversion experience. And then once he was converted and began following Jesus, he went on a rampage just sharing the gospel all over, starting new faith communities. And one of the new faith communities that the Apostle Paul started was in Philippi. We're looking at Greece. And it is actually the first European country to have our place to have a Christian community. Philippi, the first European place with a Christian community. Paul started this, this congregation, but of course, Paul was a missionary, so he went place to place. He did not stay. He did not pastor. He was one who started the churches and then would empower others to lead the congregation. Well, as Paul went away, he got in trouble with the authorities and he wound up in a Roman prison. It's more probably like house arrest. But Paul was under arrest. And so the church community that he started in Philippi, in Greece, uh, wanted to care for him, so they sent Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus was a Gentile. He was not Jewish, and he was not familiar with the Old Testament, or what we call the Old Testament, but he ex had accepted the message of Jesus Christ that Paul had delivered. And so 
the church in Philippi sent Epaphroditus to Rome to take care of Paul. They sent with him a care package. They were showing hospitality because they knew how important it was to live a welcoming life. Now, we don't know exactly what happened, but somewhere along the line, uh, Epaphroditus got real sick. I mean, he was there to take care of Paul, and, and apparently he did. He did a great job taking care of Paul's needs, but Epaphroditus himself got sick. Paul says it was because of uh, him sharing the gospel. Maybe he spent, up, spent long nights teaching and preaching. Who knows, but he got sick. The church in Philippi was concerned about him, so Paul writes a letter, uh, and we have this letter. Paul writes this letter to instruct the church in Philippi. A lot of, a lot of powerful things that Paul teaches in, in the letter to the Philippians. He gives the letter to Epaphroditus to take back to Philippi. That's how they got this letter. And in the letter, as we read here this morning, Paul wants to make sure that the church there in Philippi takes care of Epaphroditus because of all that Epaphroditus did for Paul. He was hospitable to Paul, and so now that he's coming back to you, I want you to welcome him, to take care of him. If you look at the history in the ancient Near East, you will find that hospitality was extremely important. In fact, if you go to the Near East today, you will see, you will experience firsthand their understanding of hospitality, I would say, is a level above what we understand hospitality to be in the Western world. I mean, it is a privilege. It is a spiritual act to take care, to welcome, to comfort those who are strangers. Not, not only um, is, is it a, an, a privilege to show hospitality, uh, it is also something that God requires. If you go through the Old Testament, over and over again, God would tell the Hebrews, take care of the strangers, welcome those who, who come from other places. Be hospitable to the foreigners. Why? Well, you remember when you were slaves in Egypt? You were coming from a different place and how you were mistreated. You were abused. Well, you don't want to do the same. You know how it is to go to a different place and to be mistreated. Therefore, over and over again, just read the Old Testament. Over and over again, God says, Take care of the stranger. Welcome those who are different. It's a spiritual act. And it's not just, I want us to think beyond a just welcoming people into our home. I would hope that you would welcome and be kind to those coming into your home. I'll welcome you if you come into my home. I won't give you the remote, but you can, <laughs> you can have just about everything else. Not, not only are we supposed to welcome people when they come into the church house, but we're actually supposed to live a life everywhere we go to welcome people, to be hospitable. You want to know why? You want to know why it's important to treat people with hospitality everywhere you go, whether it's in the store, restaurant, wherever? Well, in the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2, it says that we can sometimes be entertaining angels and not even know it. That, that God may have placed someone in your life for just this short moment and we not even know it. And we don't treat them like they're supposed to be treated. That's what Hebrews Chapter 13, verse 2 teaches us that you could be entertaining angels and not even know it. Think back to the book of Genesis, chapter 18, where these three strangers came and visited Abraham. And these three strangers were representatives of God, perhaps uh, 
who, who exactly they were. Some might say that it was God. Some say that these three strangers were the Trinity. Who knows? They were representing God. Strangers. And so it was Abraham's responsibility to care for them, to look out for them. Why we're supposed to live a welcoming life, you never know who you're talking to. You have no idea. Therefore, just treat everyone like they're important. Another reason why um, we need to make sure that we live a welcoming life is simply because um, someone might need a friendly word. I mean, someone might be going through some hard times and just a friendly hello with a smile might change their disposition. I mean, you never know what kind of impact you would have on someone just by being kind. I mean, it seems so simple, yet we rarely do it. That's, that's why we ought to be hospitable. Never know who we're talking to. We don't know how it could impact someone else's life. But also, here, here's what you also need to know. That living a welcoming life, wherever you are, is a way to witness to someone. I'm not saying that you're beating them over the head. Uh, if you die today, do you know where you're going? I, yeah, somebody asked me, ask me that out in public. I'm going to say, yeah, Lawrence A. Jones. <laughs> Don't be asking me that. But it is a witness. Because when people see your disposition, I mean, it, it might lead, okay, what, what does this person believe that they're just friendly to people? that they smile, they hold the door open, that they, they have this welcoming attitude. Did, did you know that your attitude that you have from day to day says a lot about what you believe? I mean, it really does. It says what you're grounded in, what you, what you hold to be true in your life. That therefore, we ought to live a life of hospitality. Uh, you, you can tell folk all you want what you believe, but actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. So live a life so that those you encounter will give glory to the one you serve. That's why a welcoming life is important. That's why it's important. But let me tell you how to live a welcome. Let, let me just say one other thing about why, because it could ease some tension, actually. I mean, just a, a friendly face, a kind word could ease some tension. Did you know um, you can't really ease tension by bringing more tension into a situation? Everybody knows that, but we still do it. I mean, it can actually ease tension. So that, that's, that's the why. Let's get to the how. How do you live a welcoming life? And this is simple. This, this, this is going to be nothing complex. Um, you can live a simple, uh, welcoming life. Just look at what Epaphroditus did. He was sent to the Apostle Paul, so he wasn't in his home. He went out to do hospitality. And Epaphroditus was welcoming because he was attentive to Paul's needs. That's what Paul himself says. He took care of my needs so that I longed for nothing. You want to be hospitable in your everyday life? Just pay attention to what's going on. You might just see someone who's trying to lift something in a store. You might just help them out or trying to reach something on a high shelf and just help them out. I mean, it's just, part of it is just being aware of what's going on 
so that you can see when someone else might need some assistance. These are all simple things of how we live a welcoming not life. And then Paul uh, wants the church in Philippi to understand how to be welcoming. So he says, when Epaphroditus comes back, welcome him, in verse 29, welcome him then in the Lord with all joy. With all joy. So you want to live wherever you are, a hospitable life. Um, just, just act like you're happy. You're, you're not welcoming if you have uh, your head down, you're frowning, you're not looking at folk, you're just trying to mind your own business. I mean, that's not really a welcome. I mean, it just says, just, just welcome him with all joy. So that means you might just show some enthusiasm, some happiness. Just, just have a good attitude. I told you, these are not complicated. It's simple. Just, just have a good attitude. You might be first to tell someone hello. And if they beat you to it, you don't come back, hello. I mean, how you say it could brighten someone's day. That's the whole thing about it. We don't know the impact that it could have on someone. So not only does Paul say to, to welcome with joy, that means we're displaying some sort of happiness, some enthusiasm, we're showing the right attitude. It says honor such people. That is to treat them with respect, to, 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 to do something, to show whether it's your posture or whatever, to show that you value, that this, this person has worth. Now just imagine, just imagine if everyone who says they follow Jesus went out in public and encountering other people, whether you're just passing by or not, had a good attitude. But what, what would happen if everyone who says they follow Jesus when they're out and about and you're encountering people just show that you respect, however that is, that you value others? Can, can you imagine what kind of world this would be? And you know where it starts? It just starts with the individual. It simply starts with the individual. So we looked at why we're supposed to be hospitable and how we can be hospitable. But now I'm going to combine those, how and why, by simply saying, look at the life and times of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus understood and understands that there's so much in life that can devalue human beings. There's so much in our world that can just weigh us down. That's why hospitality is so needed. Jesus understands that. So Jesus lived a life of hospitality everywhere he went. He was not able to welcome people into his home. He said, I don't have a home. So he had to welcome people in their home. He welcomed people in the market. He welcomed people. Just, just look at the life, life of Jesus. Just, just look at what he did. We have, he understands that people make mistakes. We have failures. We have shortcomings. So that's why um, when Jesus began his ministry, he found some ordinary people. They weren't rich. They weren't educated. They didn't have connections. They were simply fishing. And Jesus said to them, hey, you all want to come follow me? He welcomed them. And that, hey, you want to follow me extends not just to those in first century. I mean, it extends to everyone. That's the welcome that Jesus extends. Just come follow me. Not, not only did he welcome people by saying, follow me, and I'll, I'll show you some things that you haven't seen before. But Jesus, Jesus actually ate with sinners, 
Ooh. He was criticized for it. And, and have you ever wondered why some people in, in the New Testament, they're called sinners as if no one else is a sinner? It's because the biblical writers were highlighting specific groups that were looked down upon, um, like the IRS. I mean, I mean, tax collectors here. <laughs> they were looked down upon. Of course, prostitutes. All of these. Jesus says, I, I'm, I'm going to sit down and eat with you. That's how welcome he, he was. Not in his own home. He went to their home. Went to the home of a tax collector, Zacchaeus. And said, you can be a part of this thing we're doing. Jesus lived a welcoming life. And then he even tells a story of just how welcoming he and God the Father are. Parable of the father and the two sons. I know many people call it the prodigal son, but as I've shared, that's a terrible name for the parable. Jesus didn't call it that, we did. But it's a terrible name for the parable. The father and the two sons, because the story is really about the father, not so much the two sons. But when one son goes away, squanders his money, lives a life that he's not supposed to be living, he goes back to his father's house. And what does his father do? He runs out and greets him. He runs to meet him to bring him back into the house. Jesus was all about a welcoming lifestyle. The last thing I want to share about Jesus and his welcoming lifestyle was after the resurrection. This was after he had ascended into heaven, and we say seated, seating, seated, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Well, the ministry of Jesus continued on with the 12 apostles and the other disciples, and because the church started growing so much, the apostles had to anoint deacons, the first deacons of the church, and Stephen was one of them. Stephen, because he would continue the ministry of Jesus, he would eventually be stoned. The scripture says in the book of Acts that um, as he's being stoned, he saw, no one else, the heavens open up. And Jesus wasn't sitting down. Scripture says Jesus was standing, ready to receive him. If we say we follow Jesus who lived a welcoming life, then it makes sense that we would strive to do the very same thing. So hear me. If you feel stuck in life, Jesus says, you're welcome to follow me. If you don't feel worthy for whatever things you may have done in the past or maybe some things you're doing right now, Jesus says, you're welcome to follow me. If, 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 if you don't feel like you belong to anything, Jesus says, you're welcome to come and eat at my table. And even if you don't know where to go, Jesus says, you're welcome to come to my home. And at the end of this life, Jesus will stand and say, you're welcome because I have a room that's made just for you. As the followers of Jesus, we're called to live a life of showing people respect, kindness, because it says a lot about who we are and the one we serve. And if we did that, if we just made an effort to live a welcoming life, I believe we'd see all kinds of changes in this dark and cold world. So let us.
We want to open up the doors of the church and the first invitation, if you have not accepted God's gracious gift of life in abundance through Christ Jesus, we want to give you an opportunity today. That's the first invitation. The second invitation, if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you as a part of the St. James family. So we invite you to connect with us, to reach out to us today. You can email care at sjumckc.org or call us at 816-444-5588. The doors of the Lord's Church are open and you are welcome to come. Won't you connect with us today? I want to remind you, Super Adult Sunday School, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I have to always say that because we have people all over the country uh, watching and who may want to join. So uh, you can register. I think if you go to our website, you can register via Zoom uh, to join this important conversation about the Holy Spirit. And to find out all the ways in which St. James is connecting people with God in practical ways, you can go to our website, sjumckc.org or call us at 816-444-5588. I want to invite you as we prepare to leave to stand either in body or in spirit. Now may the God who loves us unconditionally, the God who welcomes us at all times, guide and strengthen you to live a welcoming life. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.